Welcome back to Pyrex YouTube and today a quick video on how to get up and running with Alembic in SQL model. And Alembic, if you don't know, is a database migration system. So um, databases or REMs, it always starts out nice with single table and create the table from scratch. But once you start to have um, a bigger application and real data, you really want to be careful about how you manage your database. And much like Git for a uh, um, version control of your code, you can use a version control system for database as well. So you can keep track of all the changes you're making, adding columns, removing columns, renaming columns, um, all these kind of SQL operations you do in your database. You can keep that, keep track of that in version files and manage your database schema evolution rather uh, in a more safe way. So without um, risking corrupting your data. So let's look uh, at an example of using Alembic with SQL model in this video. I got a virtual environment set up in this Alembic uh, directory. I'm going to pip install SQL model in Alembic. And I took a little bit of starter code already from the um, SQL model documentation page, which um, if you're New to SQL model actually is an ORM. So uh, for a long time, we had SQL Alchemy, then Pydentic came along for the type hints and validation. And uh, Sebastian Ramirez merged them together. And now we have SQL model uh, that you can use. Um, yeah, that kind of leveraged the power of both SQL Alchemy and uh, Pydentic. And the documentation has a first example of a hero class um, that you can define with table equals true. And that then will create a hero table in the database. And here it has name, secret name, and age. And what we maybe can do is just start with name and use Alembic to add those columns one by one. Let's actually put this in a models as high. Uh, import SQL model, take that from here. And the optional. Actually, optional, you would need that for Python 3.8 for the 3.9 upward or 3.10, probably. Or maybe 3.10. I think it's already in 3.9. You can do, you can use the pipe symbol for this. And let's keep this app.py to quickly test out if, if it worked. So, I'm actually not going to run this. We're going to manage the migration process with Alembic. But I do want to have a little bit of code here to see if I can write a hero to the database. So with actually do that. Uh, I will do that in a bit. Let's focus first on the Alembic part. So Alembic, we can kick off Alembic with Alembic in it in the name of a folder. I usually call it migrations. And what I now got apart from my modules is a new migrations directory uh, with a readme, m.py, a macro file, and versions. Um, all the migration files are going to be written to the version directory. And in env, in alembic.ini, an env, um, we need to do some configuration to, to tell Alembic how to connect to the database. Now you can do that in alembic.ini, um, but I do find it a bit disturbing to hard code a database Postgres um, user and password here. So I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do it in env.py. And actually we wanna, load in the database from an environment variable. And let's use a Postgres database. So I can, an environment variable. So I'm going to make a .m file. I'm going to say Alembic demo as the name of the database. Locally, I run Postgres with just user, net, user Postgres and password, password. Runs on localhost and on port 5432. And in this end file, which I should get ignore as well, 
uh, I can set one or more environment variables. And I pip install Python decouple to load in that environment file. And I also will need psychopg binary. Sci oops. Um, binary you can use for local development. In production, it's a much preferred or recommended to use cycle G, so without the dash binary. Okay, um, so back to my amp.py, I can now do from the couple import config and then set database URL equals config database URL, and that will load it in from the .m file. And now instead of setting that, hard coding that database URL in alembic.ini, I can do a config set main option, refer back to the alembic key here, so sqlcme.url, and set that to the database URL we set here, and which again was loaded from the environment. So that's the database uh, connection part. Now with Alembic, you can run it as two ways. You can write your migration files manually and then sync them to the database, or you can have Alembic watch your models. Um, so what we have in models.py and auto-generate them. And I much recommend that um, way of doing things. It's also how Django does it and it works um, really well. And there, is already, there are already some useful commands here to enable that. So you can add your models metadata object here for auto-generate support. And then you also need to import your models, right? So my models currently live in models.py. So I can do from models import uh, hero. And I will also need to get the metadata object which should be in SQL model metadata. And that comes from SQL model import uh, SQL model. So that's the uh, metadata and that goes into target metadata, which then is used here in run migrations offline, run migrations online, which you don't have to change anything. Um, okay. So that's the import, that's the metadata. We have set the database and we need one more change and that's in the Mako file. So Mako, um, this is the template Alembic is going to use every time it makes a new migration file and there's only SQL Alchemy imp imported. So we also need to import SQL model because it's going to reference SQL model stuff here. And if you don't have this import, then that will fail. All right, let's um, see if that works. And we can use the uh, Alembic revision command for that. And that's created a revision file. Well, I'm actually not happy because I didn't give it a name and nothing happens. So normally every migration file comes with an upgrade and downgrade um, function. And that should have the um, the steps that Alembic will follow to migrate the model changes into the database. And that's because I didn't run it the right way. So let me remove this migration, run this again, but now with auto-generate and also give it a meaningful message. Um, well, this is really just the, um, yeah, I guess the hero table, right? Create hero table. Okay, um, that's an error on my part because in env, I should have done Postgres QL. That's what happens when you copy things from a Django project <laughs> where this works. But for uh, SQL Alchemy and SQL model, I need to call this Postgres SQL. And no module cycle G2. Turns out I uh, installed the wrong cycle two driver. Okay.
And I forgot to make the database as well. So create DB. It's a Postgres command that uh, allows you to create databases. And now it should work. So we got a new migration file. Notice that the file is now better named because I used the minus M meaningful message. And let's see what's in there. Um, here's the SQL model import. I put in the macro file. And the upgrade and downgrade now have um, meaningful things. So it will create a hero table with two columns. That's the primary key constraint. And in the downgrade, that's kind of the reverse, right? If you would roll back this migration, that's those are the steps to undo it. So in that case, it will just drop the table. Um, so that's cool. So how do I now get it into the database? I can do a lambic upgrade head, which basically says go to the latest revision. And now the database should have those changes. Right, so it has a hero table, also has a revision table. Select all from, which keeps track of the uh, hash of the latest revision we, uh, we migrated, uh, very similar to Git. All right, let's um, add a column. Secret name. And uh, make a new migration. And that worked. And now we see in the new migration file that we added a column. And the reverse is to drop the column. Can again run a lambic upgrade head to apply that change to the database. And then if I do uh, backslash D on hero, we have the new column. Right? Um, yeah. So that's basically all you need to get started. I think one, two more things. Uh, we could verify if we can work with this model. So we can do hero name equals Julian, secret name dad, session at hero session commit. And I need to import that. Notice here I'm still using the SQLite database. That's fine for now. Um, if you want to work with the same database, you would have to do that uh, decouple step I did before. So let's run that. Oh, yeah, and I'm, of course, because I, well, let's actually use the same database. I think that's easier. So, um, Okay, going back to my database. And effectively, we have the Julian row being written to the database, perfect. And one final thing here in the config, um, we do the models import as well. So now we have model imports here and we have model imports here which is a bit unfortunate. Ideally, we want to do that in one place. So what I read in an issue on SQL model, I believe, is that you can also do from app import SQL model. And as you know, with imports, um, it will actually parse the whole file. So it then also comes across this models import. And then we... Um, so we skip this one, the um, SQL model, SQL model object. We rather do that here with the advantage of we still get this, but as uh, we're parsing app, and that could be anything, right? Whatever you call that module, it can also be DB, but in this case, I called it app.py. Um, not only do we import the SQL model, 
but you're also doing the model imports. So then I can just do the model imports in one place, which is a bit more uh, dry or don't repeat yourself. So maybe to confirm that that works, let's do one final migration also to um, drive this home. This I changed to a more modern typing syntax. So we have an optional H we can add. So we changed our models again. So we can make another auto generate migration. Oh, and I'm actually, uh, because I'm importing app in the envelope this is running. So let's uh, protect this by calling it um, only if we call the script directly. So upon import, this name equals main is not hitting. And we have another video on that. Um, so with, when we import, this doesn't hit. So it doesn't run this. That's what I want. OK, so yet another migration file. Again, they all go into this um, versions subdirectory. And again, we have an add column of H, and the reverse is to remove that column. So then we do to commit this to the database, Alembic upgrade head. And that worked. And now if we check the heroes table again, we have the new H field as well. And as it's optional, that's just set to null for Julian. One final thing is um, how friendly or not a Lambic can be. So let's make one more column. Um, say we call it um, Thursday. And that's going to be uh, a date. So we need to import that. And as it's not defaulted or typed to or non optional, um, it's a required field. So what happens um, with the existing data, right? <laughs> well, we can make another migration. That's fine. So that generated this file. Again, add column. But now it says nullable equals false, right? The reverse is to drop the column. What happens if I apply this migration? It actually errors out uh, because the column birthday of relation hero contains null values, right? So um, there's already a row in this database. And yeah, it now it doesn't know what to put there, right? And that's where I definitely like Django's migration system better because at this point it would now ask you the question, like, what do you, do you want to go back to your migration file and edit it? Or do you want to provide a default value? And I often say, well, I will give a default value and then it will move on. Here, here you get actually a, a crash, right? So you have to kind of figure it out. That probably means that you will have to write some uh, SQL in your uh, migration file. So again, to show you how that is only because there's already data in the table, we can do a truncate table hero. So now the table's empty and then it should work because there are no rows in that database where it needs to make a decision, right? So yeah, um, again, I would much prefer getting a prompt here to uh, provide the default. Um, if, if that's possible, let me know. Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, I would love to hear that. Maybe not a very short video, but definitely um, something I needed the other day to start using Alembic in combination with SQL model. So. If you're in that position, I hope this video helps you get set up. If you have any feedback or questions, comment below, and uh, I will see you in the next video.